thank you, Jesus, that you are our living hope. Thank you for everything that you bring into our lives through your Spirit. And so, Father, as we consider your word this morning, I pray that through Jesus, your word would have an impact on us because your Holy Spirit brings it to us. Father, would you give us unanxious minds and hearts? Would you give us uncluttered hearts and minds through your Spirit that we might hear what your Spirit is saying to the church? That we might hear what your spirit is saying to us as as individuals so father would you take your word today the words on on your pages and father would you begin to write them on our hearts in jesus name we pray and everybody said amen amen please feel free to um, take your seats Earlier, uh, when we began our time of, of worship, Hannah uh, led us in a song. It was simply blessed and uh, bless God, uh, the title. And the words have such a significance for our lives that we, that we bless God. A portion of scripture that I want us just to look at today, particularly, particularly one verse, but uh, it's hard not to interact with the stuff around it if you want to open your Bible, your phone, your iPod to Ephesians chapter 1. Um, Paul, in the normal, formal introduction to, to a letter, I'm sure I've said this a hundred times over the years and you've maybe heard it, 99 of them. When these letters were received by a, a, a church, um, it wouldn't have been a gathering like this. They were probably in a, in a big house and a crowd of people crowded in possibly to a house and they would have heard the word, a letter has come from the apostle. And they would have gathered and they would have got the letter and it wouldn't have been a, a neat, as neat in the books that we have. And, and the whole letter would have been read to them. And I'm sure there would have been lots of discussion and those letters, they were formal letters, they were typified in their day. Um, they weren't all of a sudden religious ways of, of, of writing. So they began with the formal introductions and, and that sort of thing. And that's exactly what Paul does here. He introduces himself before he acknowledges the recipients of his letter, the Christians at Ephesus. So he begins, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and the faithful in Christ. So that, that, includes, that includes us. We're, we're, we're in there by inclusion of those who follow, follow Jesus and he goes on to say then, and this isn't formal, that there's a passion behind Paul's words. He wants us to come into this condition. He says, grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. His desire is that we would know and live in that grace and peace that come from God only. Many writers would say we'll never know the peace of God if we haven't already got the grace of God. Uh, and, and this is Paul's desire. But then he changes ever, ever, ever so slightly in the way he begins this letter. Normally then you would have the, 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 the formal prayer moment, thanking God for us and praying for us to the Corinthians. Paul wrote, I always thank God for you. To the Philippians, he said, I thank my God every time I remember you. To the Thessalonians, we always thank God for you. But here, here Paul changes it up. He says something completely different. In fact, this is probably coming from his Jewish roots. The next thing Paul says is, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms in Christ. 
And what that is, is a, what's known in, in, in Paul's world as a, a baraka. It's the way that in synagogue or in prayer, the, the Jews would begin their day, they would begin a meal, they would put something new on for the first time, and there would be a, a baraka for that. And this is exactly where Paul is here. It's, it's almost like an excited outburst. It's like Paul in Romans chapter 11. Alan and I were talking with a couple of people about this just last, last week. In Romans chapter 11, when Paul has gone through Romans chapter 9, 10, 11, and he just bursts forth with his praise, doxology, benediction, oh, the depths of the wisdom, of the, the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. And here, he, it seems he has turned to this more... Jewish way. And he begins. He's not blessing God because of what God has done. He's blessing God because he is God. Blessed be God. Your translation say, might say, praise be to God. Bless God, the God and Father. Blessed is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, that's what Baraka does. That's what that way of expressing wonder at how blessed God is. Wow. Jimmy spoke just a moment ago about how different God is, about how holy God is. A a measure that we can never measure. I think Jimmy said if it was the finest cut, if it was the finest material, it it still wouldn't cut because God is a cut above the rest. So it's like Paul is going, wow, bless God. God is so blessed. He is exalting the high majesty of God, the creator of heaven and earth. And that's how Paul, as a Jew, at home or in synagogue or when he was tent making, that's how they would have blessed God. That's how they would have praised God, confessing and recognition that God is the source of everything, that God is the source of of all blessing. I found it interesting to learn that they didn't only do it before a meal, but after a meal as well. I mean, I as what you after a meal, I usually just kick back and go, if that's her dinner, we've had it. (laughs) Whereas they would repeat, repeat the same baraka. Blessed art thou Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. It's that recognition, blessing God for who God is first, and then for everything that God supplies, that God provides. And so what it seems is like Paul is is bringing us into this Christian bracket. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms in Christ. And then for the next 12 verses, he begins to express and delineate some of the blessings that God is bringing, is pouring into our lives. In fact, what he's doing, he's showing us how we are blessed. And he runs through all of these verses, and rather than go through them, I'll just summarize them. He speaks of our redemption, how God has blessed us in our redemption, which has come from God through Jesus, and has been applied appropriately to our lives by the Holy Spirit who dwells within us. He speaks of our forgiveness. He speaks of our adoption, the confirmation of our adoption, our sonship, our daughtership, if there's such a word. Sonship gathers it all, that we are God's children. He speaks of the seal of the Spirit, that indwelling Spirit that seals us 
that guarantees our future inheritance that indwells us. One of the big ones is how God has chosen us. And so this letter is being read out to this group of mostly new Christians, new followers of Jesus. That It's not long since been, they've been worshipping the moon or some other god or, or deity or some other mythological creature that their world was absolutely packed with. And they're sitting hearing that God has chosen them. It reminds us, of course, because we know the scriptures of John chapter 15 and verse 16, where Jesus said, you did not choose me, but I chose you. All of these things in Christ, in a very simple way of of, of understanding that, would would just be to say, through Christ, everything comes through Jesus. It's like God has put everything in in Jesus' hands. And everything that's in the love and the grace of God comes to us through Jesus, applied to us, appropriated to us through the Holy Spirit. Every spiritual blessing. But, But only these things. What do spiritual blessings mean? I'll tell you what it doesn't mean. It doesn't mean that they're some sort of ethereal, other, otherworldly, yes, maybe. Uh, they're not some sort of otherworldly blessing that we are not in, we are not in reach of. That you have to be this super spiritual, mystical per, in order to in order to get to them. Some writers preachers, to save us from the prosperity gospel, have said, well, it it, it only means those things that Paul is talking about. They are spiritual blessings. It's not that God is interested in all the other things of our lives. They, they, They could have saved themselves and us if they'd understood that spiritual blessings here, and the word spiritual is being used more as an adjective than a verb. It's describing the source. Is they come from the Spirit. They're the Spirit's blessings. They're not these mystical, super spiritual, other words. They, they, be- they come from the Spirit. They're the Spirit's blessings. Anything that comes from the Spirit, Anything that comes from the Spirit, that God's love initiates, that Christ's death on the cross affects, and that the Holy Spirit appropriates to our lives. Where where, where we're better concentrating is on the little phrase, in the heavenly places, in the heavenly realms. That's That's maybe a more important we study for us this morning. You see, if you think about the context of where I've just taken us a moment or two ago, you have these moon worshippers, you have these pagan, Gentile worshippers of all sorts of gods who lived with capricious gods, malevolent gods, gods who they were forever having to pay to have a little bit of luck. If only the gods were for us. You see, they the way they believed in gods, the way they believed in idols and all of that stuff, they would bring their offerings. They they would nearly pay their way to blessing. They would pay their way to luck because the gods were against them. The gods weren't good like we were singing about our God this morning who is holy and so different that he's he's just incredible. But the world that they lived in, The gods who were in the heavenly places for them, they weren't like our God. And Paul, actually referring to Satan in chapter 2 and verse 10, speaks of him as the prince of the power of the air, of the heavenly places. 
And then in chapter 6, he reminds the, the Ephesian Christians and us, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. You see, theirs was a world of fear and superstition. Theirs was a world of charms and amulets for, for protection. Theirs was a place, a world, where everything bad that happened, where everything that was against them, where everything that was harmful came from these heavenly places, came from these heavenly realms. And then Paul racks up and he says in chapter 19 and 20 of the passage we're in, chapter 1, and he says, God raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand. Where? In the heavenly realms far above all the rule and authority and power and dominion and everything that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the age to come. Everything that was against you, everything that you were frightened of, everything, Jesus is over it. What a passage to read the week after Resurrection Sunday. Jesus has been seated at the right hand of God in the heavenly realms and he is defeated and overcome and God has put everything under him. And Paul says, everything that was against you, everything that you were trying to appease, all the malevolence, everything that was against you. And if that is not all, Here's what else Paul says. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus for a reason. And Paul, in order. Now that means there's a purpose for setting us in this particular place. In order that in the coming ages, I, I, I wish with time to look in the verse 7, where in that coming ages is aeons and aeons, ages and ages. How many times this week we will come back to that? That he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. And as I just came to... Uh, a moment of looking into that verse. This was the question I asked myself. Do you ever feel that there are some things or even areas in your life where you just can't seem to win? Where you just can't seem to get over? What you just can't seem to defeat? And I began to think think of areas in my own life. If we were all to take a moment today, there would be areas of these in our lives where we just feel we, we just can't get the grip of it. We just never seem to, to win that battle, to get over that, get over that fear, to get over that, uh, that with, uh, something we feel it's against it. I don't want to use the phrases blessed and cursed, but there's times where I think I'm more cursed than I'm blessed. And I wonder, do I need to read these passages more? 1 John 5, verse 4 says this, every God-born person, every follower of Jesus conquers the world's ways, the conquering power that brings the world to its knees is our faith. How are we blessed? We're blessed because we've been redeemed, we've been forgiven, we're adopted, we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we're chosen, all of these things, but, 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 but much more. But much more. Who is blessed? I came across this verse and I get down out on this wee verse for a long time. Well, it's easy to say who is blessed, 
Who is blessed is the forgiven, the chosen, the adopted, the spirit filled. All, all, we're, please find yourself in those categories this morning. But listen to this psalm. Psalm 65 verse 4 says this, Blessed are those you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with the good things of your heart. Blessed are those you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with the good things in your house. It reminded me of a friendship, a friendship that I I, I do still have. Wouldn't see the person as often that they just happened to be for out for coffee with them this week, and that's what reminded me. First met them many, many, many years ago, pastoring, and got to know each other, and started to hang out together, and um, and, and something happened in this friendship that that I had never had never happened to me before. He must have been picking me up to go somewhere, and um, I was running a bit late as usual. He would say. Um, he used to say it's like going somewhere, everywhere we go, it's like going with Mr. Bean. Um, that was me on this. <laughs> and uh, I'll keep reminding him of it. And, but I remember this day, I must have been up the stairs, and I heard our door rapping, and then I heard it opening. And I, apart from when you were kids, and you used to share up the hall, and if nobody answered you, you just went on in. This person come on in, and, and I shared it down. I'll be down, I'll be down in a minute. And by the time I got down, he was making himself coffee. Now, it was in the days before Starbucks and Nero's. You know there was the day you had to make your own coffee. So there was. And I, and I can remember thinking, and that must have been whatever way I looked at him. He said, refrigerates, mate, refrigerates. I'm thinking, refrigerates? That's steam. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, so, and, and so every time he would come into our house, he wouldn't even come into the living room. He'd walk on past you in the kitchen and he'd, he'd make himself a cup of coffee. Now, in our house, if you ever come to our house, that's probably the best way to get a cup of coffee. Okay? <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. Because Ann and I, we, we, just, we just would never think. Anne, and now, Ann's wee bedtime routine now. She gets a wee, she asks me at night, you want a wee cup of tea, love? And a cup of wee custard creams. <laughs> and then when she goes to bed, I get another couple. <laughs> And sometimes I've been watching the TV still another couple. <laughs> and we have that, we, but we were never, we would never, you come to my house honestly, I would never think of asking you, do you want a cup of tea or, a, or coffee? It just, it's just not in our way of living. And, and as I thought about that this morning, when your children grow up and begin to do their own thing, and, and our grandchildren come to our house to, whether they realise it, they're allowed to open the fridge. He should just come in. And what I look back now and realise, wow, such was relationship that when he came in, he just felt at home. He just got on with it. And when I read that we psalm verse, blessed are those you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with the good things of your house. See, I think we have more permission with God than what we think. I think God has more for us. I told a story, it's not here a lot of weeks ago, I remember the story. And I was telling a story about one day I was in a shop with Tony, it was a wee street corner shop, and I was feeling flush, and I th- remember thinking, son, I could buy her anything in this room. I went off on a trail and tried to be funny that morning, forgot the point of the story. I was out with somebody about a week later, and it suddenly dawned on me while I was telling that story. My point was meant to be that morning that I wouldn't allow her to pick anything harmful to her that day. But it would allow her to choose anything else that would have blessed her. And I wonder sometimes are we still fainting off the malevolent gods? Am I still 
trying to pay my way into God's house? Have I not got it? Actually, that he chose me to be in this house. That I'm allowed to walk on in. That I'm allowed to open the fridge. That I have fridge rights with God. Please forgive me if that sounds in, 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 in any way disrespectful. I, I genuinely don't mean it to be. But there's a sense in our Christianity at times. Now, and I don't even mean going through the motions. I mean, we're not just not getting it. How blessed. How blessed we actually are. How much is actually available to us. Not because of what I do or, or who I am, but because of who he is and what he is making me. And how he has chosen me. And how he has redeemed me. And how he has given me a filling of his spirit. Am I, you know, am I missing stuff? Because I don't realize he's good. We sang that this morning, didn't we? That he's a good father. And he gives fridge rights. And, and all of that stuff. Am I missing how much I'm actually blessed? Because of me, because I'm not getting it. Blessed are those you choose. Blessed are those you choose and bring near to your courts. We are filled with the good things. What does it mean to be blessed? What does it mean to be blessed by God? For Paul and, 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 and his world, you're chosen. Remember, they were always trying to get to God. They were going through all the stuff. And all of a sudden, in Jesus, through the Spirit, you're redeemed. You're chosen. You're forgiven. God is for you. God is good and he is for you. He's on your side. He's not on your case. He wants to bless you and keep you and turn his face towards you. He has empowered you to overcome the world. Jacob wrestled with God and he said, I will not let you go until you bless me. Don't let him go this morning until he blesses us. Do you know what Paul's world saw that as? Anointing. I will not let you go until you anoint me. Because the anointing is the blessing and the favor of God. And that's what Ephesians 2, chapter, verse, chapter 2, verse 6 and 7 is about. God favors you. God blesses you. God anoints you. To the ancient Hebrew, to a Paul of his world, it was wrestle with God. You are highly favored. Are you feeling favored this morning? Tell yourself you're favoured. Tell the person beside you they're favoured. And they'll maybe tell you you're favoured. Psalm 90. May the favour of the Lord your God rest on us. May the favour of the Lord your God rest on you. What do you hear? What do you hear the effect? What do you hear the effect? Establish the works of our hands for us. Establish the work of our hands. It's everything that comes through the Spirit that is affected by the death of Jesus on the cross and appropriated by the Spirit to us. And I suppose as, 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 I, as I close, and I, and I will close with this, how do I, how do we live in the reality of the blessing of God. 
How do I walk in that Monday as well as Sunday during the sermon and when we come to your response song? How, how does it impact my Monday to Friday? Now you bring another character in who probably in fairness when God first spoke to him, had no idea how to walk in the blessing of God. Abraham, the Lord said to Abraham, go from your country, your people, and your father's household, the land I will show you, and I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. He was a moon worshiper as well. He came from the, the bread basket of, 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 of the world, Mesopotamia, Iran, over around about there now. He wasn't a God worshipper. He was probably a moon worshipper. How would he have connected with this idea of being blessed and being blessed to bless others? The first time he heard God's promises, he had no idea how they ever could be. He had no precedent. He had no way of knowing. How could an old childless man with an old barren wife become a nation? He had no precedent for that. He had no connection with that. And then God said this. No longer will you be called Abraham. Your name will be, I suppose as you say, Abraham. Abraham, listen, for I have made you a father of nations. I could end here for the rest of my life. Forgive me if I've been pointing too much this morning. When God calls you something, that's what you are. When God calls you something, he calls you. And he makes you. Chosen, redeemed, spirit-filled, forgiven, anointed. God is good. God is for you. When God calls you something, that's what you are. We're adopted. We're friends of God. We're blessed by God. We're highly favored. Even when you don't feel like it. Even when your circumstances won't let you even think about it. It's not because of what you've done. It's not because of who you are. It's not because of who I am. It's not because of what I've done. It's because God has called us blessed. God has called us adopted. God has called us forgiven. God has called us chosen. God has called us highly favored. He has called us anointed. He has called us his friends. Tell a person beside you you're blessed because God has told you you're blessed. Call yourself blessed. How did Abraham connect with it? I suppose the one way, I'll try and say this quickly, the one way I have way of realizing that is when we read in the Romans 4, we read in the Hebrews 11. And we say that Abraham began to act as if he was. He began to act that way. He began to believe it here. And he began to walk in it. Romans 4 and a number of verses that I've chosen out. The, the promise, the fulfillment comes by faith. Against all hope, Abraham and hope believed and so became the father of nations. It actually reminds us that it, he didn't look much like a father of nations. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead. There are no babies coming here. It wasn't going to happen. But God called him a father of nations. And that meant it was going to happen. I must have time for one story that I've told you a hundred times. But the wee lad learned to parachute. 
Uh, and he was told, he was in, 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 in the meeting before they go up in the airplane, they jump out of the parachute, and they say, right, here, here, here's the routine. We'll go up in the airplane. When you go to jump out, you, 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 you pull this cord, the red cord, you pull it, and that's your parachute opening. Just in case your parachute doesn't open, there's a blue cord. And that's the spur parachute. So if your first parachute doesn't open, then you pull that one. And he said, and you'll be okay. And when you get down, there'll be a lorry to collect you, and it'll bring you back to the base. And so the wee lad jumps out of the aeroplane, and he's gone down, and he knows he gets a certain amount of feet, and he <laughs> puts his red cord, and nothing's happening. He puts the blue cord, and nothing's happening. And he's, whatever speed you're going out of an aeroplane on the ground, he says, but yeah, I get down here, that lorry not be there. But it's not how we think sometimes. It's not how we think. Even though we know, even though we're told, God is for you. I, I, I know, Pastor, and I, I know, I know, I know. I know he's for you. No, no, God, God, God is for you. Fred writes, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms in Christ. I have been walking that out every day this week, speaking that over my own life every day this week. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has given us every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Let me finish with this. James chapter 1. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. It's so easy to us, for us to walk away today and forget that we're blessed, forget that we're redeemed, forget that we're chosen, forget that we're anointed, forget that we're spirit-filled, forget that we're highly favoured, forget that we're friends of God. I, I tested this this morning. I was watching on, getting ready. Women and men generally act differently in front of the mirror, don't we? I mean, men generally, casually, uh, that'll do. Oh, yeah, I'm brilliant, yeah, sure. And we're away. Women are more biblical. Okay, women are more biblical because what James goes on to say, whoever looks intently into the mirror. <laughs> so women are more biblical. Let's not miss the point. The point is the difference between spending a few minutes making sure I'm ready for the day and taking time to meditate on the promises of God for the day. This is a maybe. Maybe we forget we're blessed. Maybe we forget we're redeemed, we're pardoned, we're anointed, we're spirit-filled, we're highly favored, we're friends of God, we have Fred's rights. Hannah, come on, we'll worship. Maybe because we forget to look intently into who God is and what he has called us, sons and daughters. And maybe that's where we begin. Maybe that's how we connect with the blessed life. Now, please, <laughs> I should have said this earlier because I have no way of... This isn't about everything being good and everything looking okay. Don't confuse being blessed with everything being right. This is in spite of. 
You see, even if my day begins to go horribly wrong tomorrow, it doesn't mean I'm no longer blessed. It doesn't mean I'm no longer adopted. It doesn't mean I'm no longer forgiven. It doesn't mean I'm no longer highly favored. It doesn't no longer mean I'm God's friend. But I tell you what it does mean. God is still for me. He's not just with me. He's in me. And he's for me. And we are blessed. Stand. Father, even for a moment this morning, give us an unanxious, uncluttered heart that we may know that we are blessed. Father, in Jesus' name this morning, we bless you. We don't add any benefit to you, Father. We praise you. You're already worthy. You're already different. You're already holy. You're already good. We confess that you are blessed this morning. And we thank you that you have blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. We can't buy them. We can't do anything to get them in. It's because you're good. It's because you're good and your love endures forever. Let's worship him.